This morning, the people of God gathered to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Word made flesh. Today we're going to hear Luke's account of the story, the familiar story of shepherds and angels. John's Gospel adds upon the story by talking about the Word that dwells among us, full of grace and truth. The meaning of Christmas is made clear. The light shines in the darkness. It's in our liturgy where we encounter the Word made flesh. And the people of God gather today as the body of Christ. And in the meal that we will celebrate together around the holy table, so that we're able to go forth to be bearers of light as we proclaim the good news to all the ends of the earth. Let us stand and sing together our opening hymn on page three of the bulletin, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
all-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts in peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A reading from Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels all day and all night. They shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have, been, you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks. 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 from Titus, the third chapter. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life, the word of God, the word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Very large cross. 
with flowers planted all around it in the warmer seasons. In 2019, as many of you know, I took a vacation, made it just in time before the season of COVID to visit Michigan and saw some beautiful sights while I was there. I think one of the greatest enjoyments that I had as I prepared for the trip was looking up various things on the internet to decide exactly where I would travel and what I would do. Cross Village was not on my itinerary. It just so happened that when I was in Mackinac City and it was time to do some laundry at the laundromat, the local laundromat, there was a young couple there. And for any of you who know your pastor, you know I enjoy speaking with people. So right away I started up a conversation with this young couple and they were native Michigan residents. They knew the state from one end to the other. The gentleman was a truck driver actually. He knew quite a bit about our country. He'd been on most of the road. And as we talked together, he said to me, where you really need to go is to Cross Village. He said a lot of people don't know the place. It's off the beaten path, not even near the major highway. And he gave some very good directions on how to get there. He explained that there was a man who had lived in that village a couple of decades before, who had constructed a very unique restaurant this gentleman evidently enjoyed carving wood. I had lunch there that day in Cross Village. Never seen a restaurant like that before. All kinds of ornamental wood carvings, some life-size, people, animals, various scenes, all kinds of things, things I never would have, been, have expected. I asked the owner, who was the grandson of the originator, why it was what happened that the cross was erected in that large park? And he said to me, if you drive down the road a little bit farther, he said there's a row of churches. The first settlers here were people of faith. And they wanted to thank God in a very special way for all the blessings that they had received, that God had brought them to a new home where they were able to flourish. It really touched my heart to think how people might express their faith. In our Christmas story today, we learn about the shepherds who are out in the field tending their flock by night. Now we can imagine there was no artificial light like we have here in Teaneck at night. It was probably extremely dark. And God chose that moment to send the angels with a bright light to proclaim God's glory that a Savior had been born in Bethlehem in a very humble place. The shepherds went to see, to experience what the angels had promised and what the angels had talked about. Much of our journey through Advent and now arriving at Christmas, we too find ourselves at the manger to worship God and to give God thanks for the blessings that we have received. That even in this time of COVID, we've been able to gather for in-person worship over Christmas, to enjoy the beautiful hymns and carols that are so familiar to us. And we learn from that that even in the darkest of days, in the darkest of nights for the shepherds, God always breaks into that darkness to bring a great light and proclaim to all of us, unto you a Savior is born, unto you a Messiah is given. God's inbreaking of love, mercy, grace, and hope this Christmas that can last us a lifetime and beyond. Today, God reaches down to us and brings to us a Savior who will be Christ the King. We know the ending of the story, the shepherds did on that Christmas night. But we are blessed to have the entire story and to know that it's through Christ that we receive the greatest gift of all at Christmas. So this Christmas, as you look upon the nativity scene, think about the journey that you have been on during Advent, now arriving at the destination of Bethlehem. And what is it that God is proclaiming for you and for all of us on this night? Glory be to God in the highest, and on peace, earth, and goodwill among all people. 
Amen. Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a part of the Virgin Mary, and was the same man. For our sake, he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He crushed our last death by the third. On the third day, he rose again, and the more forced to the church. He ascended to heaven, and is a student that I have right in the end of the law. He will come again in glory to judge us, living in the dead, and his kingdom will not die. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, we are delivered from the world. Father. He has spoken to the us. We believe in one of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the Holy Catholic and the Holy Catholic Church. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Joining our voices with the heavenly hosts and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need, using this divine to receive our prayer. Your spirit calls your church to rejoice in Christ's birth. As we gather at the manger, help us see your face in all babies needing comfort and care. Betwixt the church and the nature and encouragement of all children. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The rocks and streams proclaim your praise. Attune us to the joyful sounds and groaning of your creation. Stir us to tend the earth wisely, that the whole earth may dwell in abundance and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your messengers declare your joy to the world. Embolden leaders and nations to make their justice and peace known throughout the earth. Uphold justice advocates and social service providers who risk their safety to help others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You, cho you choose those regarded as lowly to tell the good news of your love. Pour out your mercy and care on all who are sick, grieving, struggling, and the elderly who live alone, especially for those we pray for, either in sadness or out loud. Yes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You abide with your people in times of trouble, accompany families and children who have nowhere to turn. Strengthen this congregation and local ministries in their care for those being in danger, abuse, or neglect. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your grace and mercy extend to all. Give comfort to those who mourn and assure them of the peace you have granted those who have gone before us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus who is the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew in us the song of your salvation. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. To our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, in the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love to God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. <laughs>
allow the people in the morning off to come in first. And then after they have the seed, please come forward one at a time. We try to leave space at the tray. There's a tray in front of the food section here. The outer rim has wine. The inner circle has grape juice. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. 
May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory and made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Now may the God of hope fill each one of us with joy and peace and believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. 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 May be seated. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Carol for all that she did to prepare for Christmas. And Zulano for being faithful as a member of the choir. And the people of Grace for the beautiful church, the decorations, and all that you did in preparation. We applaud you as well. And for our guests, our visitors, and other members of the congregation, we are grateful to have all of you as a community of faith as we celebrate the Thanksgiving, the birth of our Savior in Bethlehem. It's wonderful being with all of you, and especially blessed this year to be able to be in person at Christmas. Are there any other announcements? We have lessons and carols tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Uh, that will be our service for tomorrow, which is great. I will be away actually all next week. If you need to get a hold of the pastor, there's information in the back of the bulletin. So the pastor will be covering. The information will also be available on the church phone number. Are there any other announcements for today? Let us stand then and sing together. Hark the herald angels sing. <laughs> Thanks be to God.